Hi everybody, I'm Jen with Allegory Gallery and JNT Creations. I have another fun tutorial for us today. We're going to do a springtime check glass necklace. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so this is what we're going to be making. This cute little necklace. Check glass again, because I love check glass. If we're not using precious stone, we're probably going to be using the check glass. Um, so we got some check glass flowers. They kind of look like Larimar, but they're not. Surprise, they're Picasso check glass. And we got a toggle we need. You need two jump rings. I use these oval ones because they kind of look like leaves to me. I just cut them off with some chain. And then I've got, let's see, six, um, six O's. They're also check glass. These ones are Picasso. So you need four of one color and two of the other. And then I have the little check glass mushroom flower. And these aren't quite the Saturns. They're kind of a fun, wild, uh, I don't know, bronze cut maybe? I don't know. They're fun though. Um, and then we have, let's see, there are seven head pins, well, ball pins. And I'm going to say they're about an inch and a half. Um, you don't need them really long. You're not going to use a lot. And I've got 10 inches of chain. Um, but I did cut it down because I like my necklaces a little chokery, especially because these, if the lower they are, the more they're going to rotate. So if you keep it short, kind of like around your collarbone, then you should be good as far as uh, the beads not rotating. And then we need some 22 gauge wire. Feel free to use whatever color you want. If you don't want silver, you want brass. Brass would be really pretty with this. Uh, use whatever color you want. Just make sure that you're using 22 gauge. All right. And we're going to cut um, a piece for each of these beads. So what is that? That's five. And I'm going to say... You're going to be good with about three inches of wire. I did not measure it, but I'm going to say three inches is going to be good. Maybe three and a half. Let's do three and a half. That's what we'll do. And we're going to use our coated nylon coated tool. We're smoothing this out. Kind of work hardens it as well as smoothing. And that three and a half size, we're going to do three of those for the large flowers. Yeah, very close. And then the smaller cut beads, you are only going to need, I'm going to say probably about two and a half, maybe even just two. Use some of my flush cutters. Flush cutters. So I've got those. Need two more pieces. Yeah, go with three, just to be on the safe side. Like I said, that's going to temper our wire just a little bit, make it a little bit more hardened. Let's get this model out of the way. First things first, using our round needle nose pliers. 
gonna grab it. I like smaller loops. So 90 degrees up and around that tool. Rotate and pull it out. Holding across that eye. Oh, no. Skipped a step here. Open that up just a little bit and feed a piece of the chain through. Now hold across that eye. We're in the starting position. That's up, over, and pointing up. Grab another needle nose. Go around. One, let go. Two, let go. Let go. And we're going to work that wire back up towards the eye. One, two, and go until either you run out of wire or you run out of room. I like the double coil look. It not only doesn't waste that excess wire you had, it's a little bit stronger and it's very organic looking. I don't always like a nice, nice polished look. Sometimes I like a little boho, crazy, unorganic. Okay, so feed on that bead. And this is, this is about eight millimeter. I'm making noise, sorry. Oh, that is about eight millimeter. You can go a little smaller, you can go a little bigger if you want. It's all up to you. And this is a cream Picasso color. There's a little aqua in there. I love this color. It's my favorite check glass color. So I'm going to do that 90 degree bend again. And I'm going to work my eyes in the opposite direction. So one will be going looking through it. The other one will go around it. Around it. The opposite direction. It's been a long day. All right, so around, rotate, all the way around. And you just want to make sure you've left enough room on the other side to make the same amount of coils. Grab the end of wire one. Two, working that wire back up. And tuck your little end in. These are super slim needle nose pliers from Xeron. They're my favorite. If you're a wire wrapper, you know how precise they are. All right. So you see what I mean? One's going straight and the other one's going in the opposite direction. Now we're gonna take one of the longer, what did we say three and a half inch pieces. We're not gonna quite go halfway because this flower bead is just a little bit bigger. Say maybe about a third of the way, 90 degrees. Rotate, bring it all the way around, there we go. Open it up just enough. 
to go through that. One, two, notice I only grab my wire by the very end and I let go every time I get to the top or the bottom to reposition my tool. Sometimes you get left in a little spot that it's easier to get in with the bent nose. You just want that tucked in enough that you can't fail it. I drop on one of our flowers. Ninety degrees, going in the opposite direction, all the way around. Open it up, just a squinch, and put that first jump ring on. A lot of repositioning. Coil in. Notice I'm kind of tugging it just a little, giving it some tension as I go. Just to get that wire nice and snug. And I have done my two going back up towards the eye. The flush cutters. And then get in there with the bent nose. It's a really tight little spot there. This is a really soft wire, so you don't need to squeeze it too much. All right, so this is what we've got going on. Another flower. And a third of the way. always end up leaving that left hand tool on the left hand side. I know it's crazy. So I am just doing two coils and then I go up. Another flower. Okay. 
I'm sorry, I'm probably going way out of focus. Tiny work area. I'm still new at this. <laughs> Look at that, we're about to make a mistake. We have to put the other jump ring on. Don't close your middle eyes until you've put that jump ring on. I hope this camera stays in focus. I would hate to have just done this whole thing and you guys couldn't see anything because it was all blurry. So if you don't really like the dangly doos, you don't have to put them on. It looks really cute just the way it is. Or you could add more dangly doos if you want. Dangly doos. I'm going to trademark that. And one more flower. It's really important to get that first coil straight. That sets the precedent for the rest of them. If one's crooked, they're all going to be crooked.
anyone in Willy Wonka Doodle. Here we go. Super cute. One more rosary wrap. This one you can pretty much do halfway. 90 degrees. A lot of traffic going by today. Sometimes that last little bit just doesn't want to go. Okay, last bead. And this one, you need to make sure you put the other end of the chain in before you close up your eye or your loop whichever you want to call it and that was the other piece of chain not the end of your first piece of chain There we go. See, that's just darling the way it is. For those of you who might be minimalists, it's super cute. Okay, now we're going to load up all of our ball pens. It's for our end. Clasp. And 
I like to do things in kind of a assembly line. Okay, you just want about enough room between the bead and your pliers to do about two coils. Same technique. There we go. And I'm just going to do that on all of them before we move on to the last little step of that. Ooh, Pennsylvania, big trucks, big noisy trucks. That's how our guys like it. Two more. Okay. I kind of like to do all this stuff, so let's open them all up too. This way they're all ready to go. I know we're working in real time, so it's it's gonna be a long video, right? Pause it, take a break. Grab a glass of wine. All right, and the first bead that's gonna go on, and they're gonna go on the bottom of the ring. It's gonna be the little greenish color one, or whichever color you choose. You are not bound by any rules. Unless you're trying to follow me exactly, and then you have to go green. Picasso. It's kind of like a aqua color. That hot color that everyone loves now. This one is being tough. And yes, I am going to go double on this one too because it involves less steps and you don't have to get the cutter out. These are a 22 gauge ball pen. Is being a stinker. There you go. Just make sure that you put them all on that bottom one. Next, I'm going with the contrasting color. And again, these are size six O's. We'll put all the ingredients in the drop down list. My hands must be used to working with that soft wire because now these seem really tough.
and then back to the greenish color. Make sure that last one you put on stays in the middle. <clears throat> I am just bumping everything. One is just going really off on its own. Does not want to listen. Alright. There. Don't take no for an answer. There you go. So, that's adorable too, right? The camera is really close to me, so if you hear Darth Vader, I apologize. Apparently I breathe hard when I concentrate. And I bump things. There, that's good. Two more. You guys will have an easier time doing this. Yes, they're tiny, but I'm working far away in this tiny little workspace. All right, one more.
for those of you who got the idea five beats ago, you can just skip ahead. It's all repetition. All right, we got all our little dingle dangles on. Isn't that adorable? I think so. All right, we have reached the end of the difficult, time-consuming part. It's not difficult. It's time-consuming, but it's not difficult. Okay. So once again, I did use 10 inches of chain. That's excessive to me. That's really long. I like them on the shorter side. So I'm gonna say what, that's probably, I'm gonna say it's about seven inches. Oh, I'm way off. That's only five and a half inches. So let's move to our more user friendly. We'll go six on this one, just for giggles. Again, you can go longer, you can go shorter. It's all up to you. You don't even have to use a ruler on the second one. You could just make sure you're using the same amount of links. And then you can either use a jump ring or if you have been clever enough to use chain that opens up, we're gonna just open it up. A jump ring would be more sturdy though. It'll give the jump ring more of the brunt when you move and stuff like that. So use the jump ring if you'd like. And since everything is dual sided, doesn't really matter which end of the toggle you put on first. I close that jump ring back up and this will be the end that your cute little mushroom flower goes on. Open up the other end of your chain. Just a slight twist to the side. Never open it like a Pac-Man mouth. Drop the other end of your toggle down. Make sure it's closed. And you are good to go there. So let's add our little dangle flower onto the end of the toggle itself, not the chain. And same thing, just do some coils. Oh, 
one of these tutorials, I'm going to remember to take that long dangle bracelet I have. Spare you guys the annoyance of my bracelet hitting the table. Snip that little end off and tuck it in. Nip and tuck. That's what we do. Why that one decided it was going to jet up? I don't know. Why well, your dust would And we are good. <laughs> and there you have it. One cute little spring necklace. Check glass beads. Easy peasy. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you all had a great time. I know I did. I would love to see what you've created today. So please feel free to post your design on Allegory Gallery Design Challenges on Facebook. And please like and share and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much, y'all. Have a great day.